Hi, I'm Tony. Welcome to Sports Bike Shop's video about the Risha Armada GTX Pro jacket. Risha's flagship jacket is new for 2022 and it's a serious step up from the rest of their range with a three layer Gore-Tex laminated waterproof membrane. It's a substantial robust jacket which is exactly as you should expect when it's made from these materials and costs a penny under £1100 as we record this. The main bulk of the outer is regular polyamide that I'd estimate as being 500 denier with reinforcements in the key areas. The elbows and forearms get coverage from armor core for extra slide resistance. That's a cordura material that's reinforced with extra aramid fiber thread to make it even stronger. Over the top of that is then super fabric, which is really tough stuff. If you could have a suit made all from super fabric, then you'd probably have the best slide protection around. Trouble is you wouldn't actually be able to move. So that's why it's just used as reinforcement. You also get super fabric on the shoulders and on the edges of some of the vents and the pockets. That's really about helping those bits survive the handling as you open and close them, not because those areas are vulnerable in a crash. That outer is laminated with Gore-Tex's three layer waterproof and breathable membrane. It's the most weather resistant Gore-Tex material around for motorcyclists and it's also the most breathable. Having that membrane laminated to the outer means it works with the outer shell to repel water at the earliest opportunity rather than having to wait for it to soak past the outer material. So if you plan to be riding in the stinkiest weather around, then Gore-Tex three layer laminate like this is the best option. It repels water better, it soaks it up less, and it also dries out more quickly afterwards. As a tourer or commuter in bad weather, it's always a huge relief to come back and find dry kit to put on. A laminated membrane also allows more direct venting because opening the zip separates the waterproof material and opens up a proper channel for air to flow directly through. There are a couple of layers of material behind the vents on this jacket, but there's nothing that's going to block out much air. This jacket has a good selection of vent locations. You get two short ones in the middle of the front just here, and then these large panels on the front that have magnetic clips to keep them either open or shut. And then there's also a zip on the side to keep it firmly shut. There are long underarm vents like you find on outdoor clothing and then vents across and down each side of the back. The two-way zips at the cuff mean you can have them fastened up properly at the bottom and then open up to get a vent to let some air in. You can also have a whacking great vent open down the middle of the jacket if it's really warm. Behind the main fastener there's a mesh panel so you zip that together, undo the main jacket and then the jacket's still done up but you can get airflow coming through. While we're on that main fastener, it's a chunky zip up the front with a storm flap velcroed over the top to stop rain getting to the teeth. It's a two-way zip, so if things get a bit snug around the bottom, you can just pull the bottom of that zip up to make a little bit more expansion room. The collar's a relatively basic Velcro fastener with a hook and a loop to hold it back across the throat. For full-on wet riding, there's also an extra storm collar which attaches with a zip, Velcro and a magnet to stop rain getting inside the jacket at the top. Now the cuffs on this jacket, they're really ideal for ropey weather. They open up wide enough to get a winter glove inside, which I have to say isn't always the case with Risha jackets. And they also have a short Gore-Tex inner cuff. So this goes inside your riding glove and then this jacket outer goes over the top of the glove. So this way water can't get inside the glove from the top and any water that saturates into the glove can't then soak up and get the clothes on the inside of your jacket wet. It is a bit more time consuming to get kitted up when you've got this system, but believe me, it's the best way of staying dry. There are loads of fit adjusters on this jacket as well to help get it tailored just to suit you. You get them above and below the elbows. There's a belt around the middle. There's zipped pleats and Velcro tabs at the waist. And there's also an elasticated drawstring around the waist on the inside to help you get a more airtight seal. So the last bits on the outside, pockets. There are waterproof pockets on each side near the waist and they've got zip up pockets behind them that you can tuck your hands into. The fifth pocket on the outside is the lower back pocket, which you get on most jackets of this style. So now moving to the inside, let's cover the pockets while we're on that subject. There are plenty to go out with this jacket. There's a Napoleon pocket just behind the main zip. There's a neoprene pocket with a cable outlet and then two smaller pockets round about where your ribs would be. There are also two pockets for chest armor, which if you wanted to, you could use them as storage pockets if you don't want to upgrade to stick armor in them. Perhaps the most obvious thing that's missing with this jacket is a thermal liner. It's becoming pretty common now in top end Gore-Tex jackets like this to leave out the liner and let you layer up with whatever suits you best. Risha have a quilted inner jacket that's designed to pair up with this jacket. It's called the Houdini and it costs an extra 150 pounds if you want to go down that route. Standard armor is at the shoulders, elbows and back. Shoulders and elbows are D3O inserts that meet the higher level two within the CE standard for impact protection. The back insert is a full back protector, and again, that meets the higher level two of CE. 
As I said earlier, there's room for Risha's chest armour, and that's £35 for the two inserts, which both meet the basic level one of CE. The label on the inside of this jacket as well shows the overall CE safety rating, which is the middle of three protection levels, and that's AA. There's a kidney belt incorporated too, which pulls the jacket tight around your middle. If you don't like the idea of that, and not everyone will, then that belt's really easily removed. There are two connection zips for trousers. There's a short one and a long one, and there are matching Armada Pro GTX trousers to go with the jacket, which have a laminated membrane, level two hip and knee armor, and an overall CE rating of AA like the jacket. They cost £759.99 a pair as we record this, which on top of this jacket at 1100 quid makes a combination of £1,860. The quality matches up to that price tag. When you go for a Gore-Tex laminate jacket like this, then you know the standard is going to be very high. If you want three-layer Gore-Tex laminate, then this is currently the cheapest way to get a jacket with that. If you want the optional warmth liner, then adding one of those takes the total price up to 1250 quid. And for that money, you can currently buy a Rucker Navala 2 jacket, which has a similar downliner already included and also comes with a chest protector as standard. I think that will be a very attractive rival proposition for a lot of riders, especially those who want the extra warmth. Whichever way you choose to go, my experience is riding kit made from Gore, three layer laminate, gives the best protection against the worst weather. And this is a very good option if that's your main focus, especially if you don't need or want the warmth liner for proper winter rides. I hope that tells you everything you wanted to know about the Risha Armada Pro GTX jacket, but if there's anything you'd like to ask or to add, then please pop a comment below. Thanks for watching.